Hi, this is Saka, and I'm here to help you with your homework. So this is for regular chem 8.4. I'm going to go down the order here, and I'll give you some hints for each problem. So for number one, it asks you about the frequency of a photon, and it gives it to you in hertz, and it asks you what the wavelength is. So the frequency, oops, I don't know why it's doing that. That's good. Oops. Stop that. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So the frequency is equal to 5.92 times 10 to the 14th hertz. You want to find the wavelength. So you would use this equation. C equals lambda times nu. And you'd solve for lambda. And so C over nu gives you lambda. And hopefully you'll be able to go from there. Uh, number two. Number two, you have a wavelength of uh, 1.35. Oh, why does it keep doing that? 1.35 times 10 to the minus 7. What is the energy? Now, this one's a little different. So, lambda is equal to 1.35 times 10 to the minus 7. Um, if we want to solve for energy, energy equals h times nu, and we don't have nu. But we can use this equation. Ah, stop doing that. C equals lambda times nu, right? So we use this equation first, and then we use this equation here second. So for this one, we're going to solve for nu. So C over lambda equals nu, and then you can use nu to, to solve for the energy. Okay, let's scroll down here a little bit. Oops. Escape. That's not what I wanted to do. That's what happens when you use two softwares at the same time. Okay, for this one, for, oh, turn the page, for number three, um, for three, you got to think about the difference between red light and violet light. So you have red light, remember we have Roy G Biv, this is the spectrum. This is a uh, low frequency. This is high frequency. This is low energy. This is high. Ooh, I forgot to do that. High energy. Can I erase that? Let me try erasing. Erase. No, not that. Ah, see, I can erase. And then for the last thing, we're talking about um, uh, high wavelengths. And these are, ah, stop doing that, short wavelengths. Okay? So keep that in mind as you answer your questions for this one. Remember, as we go this way, the, uh, the frequency increases. The energy increases, but the, but the wavelength gets shorter. Okay, number four. An object normally appears green in white light. What if only red light is shined on the object? Now remember, white light, if something is green, oh, I might as well use this, right? So if something is green, that means that white light Everything is absorbed, but the green is reflected back, right? So when white light shines on this, all other colors except green is absorbed. So if we switch this up, and now we shine red light at, at this, is there any green light to shine back? No. So what ends up happening is you don't see any color coming back because this red color is absorbed but there's no green light to reflect back so it would look what happens when you see no color think about what color that is and uh, hopefully you'll be able to go from there I don't want to completely give it away okay moving on to number five here number five what three colors are visible light are necessary to produce white light alright this one I'm just gonna tell you what it is it's going to be red, green, 
and blue. The reason why this is, is your eye only has three color receptors. So when you shine all three light, all three forms of light at it, it looks white to your eyes. So you're easy to trick. Six. Okay. Which of the following lights can cause ionization? All right. So if you remember today, we talked about the photoelectric effect. Maybe you remember, maybe you don't. But the idea here, it, ah, yeah. Here we have, um, we have photo, why did the color change? Electrons. Okay, the fact that you get photoelectrons means you have ionizing radiation. And so the way this works, guys, is that you have to have energy that's strong enough in order to release um, these electrons from, from, a, from an atom when it hits it. So basically when we're doing this, we're talking about very strong forms of EM radiation are only capable of doing this. So we're talking about UV, UV light plus stronger energy light. So anything UV or stronger will we'll, we'll, uh, ionize. Okay. All right, let's look at number seven here. Okay, why is UV light more dangerous than visible light? This is because, so okay, so this is number seven. Well, remember, UV light ionizes, okay? In UV light, if it ionizes, it damages, damages molecules in cells. Specifically, DNA is what we worry about much. Because if you mutate your DNA, you end up with melanomas, which is cancer, which would be really bad. And you'd be sad. Okay, so keep that in mind. And so for, for this one, the only one that's really close to being correct is the one that caught is, is the one that deals with ionizing as an answer for eight. Okay, so this is another thing. So an electron is ejected after f absorbing a photon. So again, this is ionizing, ionizing radiation. So again, think about the photoelectric effect and see, remember we talked about UV or stronger for this one again. So keep that in mind. Let me scroll down to the last two. And I'm going to turn the page. It's pretty cool. And uh, so for number nine, for number nine, it's blue and white light. Okay, so if something appears blue, what that means is the blue light is going toward your eye. Okay? So if we look at these choices, if this is true, that means all other colors are absorbed except the color we see okay there is no scattering if there was scattering that wouldn't make any sense and then for the last one here we have helium from different samples okay so the uh, yeah the atomic emission spectrum oops the atomic emission spectrum let me erase this just cuz it's fun the atomic emission spectrum remember is a quote unquote fingerprint and if that's true it shouldn't matter where the the helium comes from helium will always have the same emission spectrum no matter what, so it doesn't matter, okay? They should be identical, okay? And that's your help for now. Good luck.